Hey everyone, well, you know, I did the noisy thing again. <laughs> if you want to hear it clearly, it's, it's at the end of the video. So two videos ago, <laughs> I made 405 wheel horsepower with a 2GR. Not this motor, but a 2GR with that intake in particular. And I have never had a video explode as much as that one did. Um, as of the shooting of this video, that video has got 47,000 views, which is... Wow, just thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, but one of the questions that kept coming back, I got inundated with emails on this, I'm still getting them, uh, a whole bunch of the video comments, and please keep the comments coming. I mean, this is, how, this is how we move forward. I appreciate the feedback. But the big thing that kept coming back is, what if I take that intake and I put it on a factory motor? I didn't really have high hopes because the truth is, your cams and your intake really have to work together. Um, your exhaust also has to work together, but especially your cams and your intake, they have to be built for the same power curve, otherwise they just kind of cancel each other out. But there was enough of you that wanted to know, and uh, one of the things I got over and over is, right, is this is super easy to install. What if I wanted to install the intake first and then do cams later? Would the intake gain me anything? So. Well, the short answer is right here. 20 wheel horsepower. Uh, I'll admit that's actually more than I expected. Now, if you look at the torque curve there, what you'll notice is it never really gets into the zone where it resonates. Uh, this intake is not, it's not flowing enough. The ports are essentially too big, so the port velocity is not getting up to the point where it really starts to make extra power. But on this motor, it's really just a very nice free-flowing intake that isn't restrictive. Um, the runner length, of course, still affects the power band a little bit, but it's still gaining 20 horsepower at the top end. Um, it's costing some power, you know, if you take a careful look at that, right? It's, it's costing a bit of power in the mid-range, but if you think about that, once you're out of first gear, you're really, if you're trying to accelerate hard, you really don't have to be in that range. And if you're not trying to accelerate hard, there's still way more than enough torque down low. So um, it would be a perfectly good intermediate step, or even if you wanted just the intake, that's certainly an acceptable thing to do. The other thing I tested is this throttle body right here. This is the 90 millimeter throttle body. This is what I made 405 wheel horsepower out of. Well, you'll notice that's not installed on there right now because what's on there right now is a 76 millimeter Tundra throttle body. The reason I did this is because the stock ECU, the stock ECU doesn't understand the signals coming out of this. If you plug this into it, it'll just throw you a whole bunch of fault codes. If you plug this into it, the Tundra throttle body goes from 72, uh, the stock 72 millimeters up to 76 millimeters, and it has the exact same output signal. So the ECU knows how to control this. And I checked, uh, I've got some, some data logs with both throttle bodies. Um, at wide open throttle, at the top of the rev range, this thing is only giving about two and a half KPA of pressure drop from out here to inside the manifold. And that's the same on either throttle body. So now what we're looking at is not only that 20 wheel horsepower can be had early, but it can be had on the factory ECU. Um, of course, there's a retune needed, not because of the intake actually, the, uh, it ended up because we're not getting any funny resonations, uh, well funny, <laughs> powerful resonations from the intake, the VVTi angles, the way that they're set, I did find a little bit more power by moving them a couple degrees, but overall the bass tune is pretty close, pretty close to what you can get for max power, um, but it does still need a new tune because while the uh, while the throttle body works, you still need to go from the three inch mass airflow tube to the three and a half inch mass airflow tube. Also, the first batch, the first production batch of intakes should be shipping uh, probably within the month or so, uh, sometime late June or so. But the runners, so each, each one of the intakes has three of these, right, six cylinders, but that finish is pretty much a mirror finish. Uh, I love the work that this shop does. It's really, really impressive. Uh, that is the production finish right there. So if you order one now, that's what you're gonna get. 
And as of the making of this video, there are still a few spots left on the first production run. Um, but don't worry, if you can't get it right now, uh, there will be more production runs in the future. They're just gonna take a little bit longer to get. I can only make so many at a time. So anyways, yeah, if, if you're looking for that intermediate step, um, or if you just want the extra 20 horsepower, there it is, it works. <laughs> That's all I got. Have a good one.